how you doing? Thanks for watching. Uh, going to dig into a, a little prime example of how scan tools are not shopping list generators and also how to what we found with this Dodge Ram that randomly stalled. So let me back up first and say, first and foremost, um, a lot of times on forms, various forms, people get a string of codes from an inexpensive scan tool and they march down to their local auto parts store or the auto parts store scans the codes for them and then presents them with a possible list of sensors. People go out and buy the sensors at the stores, they put them in, and the problem sometimes fixes itself fixes itself because you replace the defective sensor and everybody's just always quick to like blame the sensors oh it's always the sensor sensors are bad um well here's why uh maybe that's not the case it's not a shopping list generator um the scan tool is only going to tell you what the computer sees as possible faults kind of like going to your doctor and saying my stomach hurts and your doctor doesn't turn around and go oh you have a stomach tumor get on that table and we're going to cut it right out that's not how your doctor works, right? Your doctor starts doing some tests and then comes up with a conclusion. That's what automotive technicians do. Um, we come up with a conclusion after careful testing and uh, then repair the fault. So, 2007 Dodge Ram 1500, 5.7 liter Hemi. A uh, friend calls me up one day, says the truck has flashing check engine light, um, the throttle body with a little throttle body icon, the lightning bolt is, is flashing. Truck won't go over 15 miles an hour, 1500 RPM. He limps it back home, parks it. I get my scan tool, walk over there, turn the truck on, and it runs just fine. <laughs> Isn't that always the way, right? So I hook up my scan tool, get some codes. And scan tools are like a compass. They direct you in the direction that you're going. It's not the answer. Okay. So there's a code in there, uh, throttle position, uh, sensor, uh, in the throttle body, uh, throttle body codes, accelerator pedal position codes. So that's the gas pedal inside the car. Um, and an oil pressure sender fault. And the oil pressure sender, after some brief research is on the same line, gets fed the same voltage as the accelerator pedal position sensor um, and also the throttle body assembly. So go home, do a little more research, and uh, people are saying, oh, the 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 uh, oil pressure sending unit uh, can be faulty. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, maybe the truck saw a loss of oil pressure and then it shut the truck down and, and then it came back and then these sensors got kind of confused, mixed up. I'm not a Chrysler technician. Let me get that out of the way first. And I've touched only a handful of Chrysler products in my life, so I'm not intimately familiar with them. Anyhow, tell them this and I'm like, well, we can run a manual oil pressure test. I can bring my gauge over and we can hook it up and plug it in, make sure the truck has good oil pressure. Um, meanwhile, he's looking up the price of the part. He's like, it's $20 on Rock Auto. I'm just going to replace the sensor. And I'm like, you sure you want to do that? I am not a fan of just guess, guessing at what's wrong with cars. <laughs> Stick with me. This is a great reason why. So orders the oil pressure sending unit, puts it in, and uh, it's good for about three weeks. And he's like all jazzed because like now he's like, my oil pressure gauge reads higher. And I'm like, all right, cool. That was, uh, was a good guess. And the truck is now fixed and it's working great. So about three weeks goes by and uh, it has another problem. It's doing the same exact thing uh, as he described before, only now when I went to look at the truck, it was now a crank no start. So I break out the cheapy scan tool and we first see that there's a code for a throttle position sensor and there's also a code for the oil pressure sensor. Uh, okay, well we replace that uh, like I had said earlier. Um, later, we went on and I broke out the big scan tool and saw that there were a bunch of codes in there that the generic scan tool didn't pick up. So here, here we are looking at the big scan tool. Uh, there was throttle body codes, reference sensor voltage one circuit low. That was worrisome. But then I had these other ones in here for the accelerator pedal and the throttle position sensor. And I thought, you know, I'd read that... Um, you know, that, that could be a problem. And there's the oil pressure sender again. So, uh, did some research, came up and saw that the, uh, 
pedal assembly, you know, was a common fault. So it was a throttle body, but they're expensive. I didn't want to just guess and, you know, say they're, they're the problem. So I, I tested them, all right? And I went through and looked at the accelerator pedal position sensor and saw in testing that its voltage was zero um, on APP1. So at that point, I said, well, there's either a short internal to this thing um, or uh, there's something else going on. So I brought the uh, pedal assembly back and hooked it up to a 5-volt uh, piece and tested it out. So before I did that, I needed some basic information. Uh, went in the shop key, got the pinouts of the sensor, um, you know, looked at them, said, OK, where's my power and ground come in? Where's the signal return? Where's the reference voltage? Um, all that kind of good stuff. I then came home. Uh, we, we unbolted the pedal assembly, and this is now late at night. It's in the dark. And uh, ran some tests on the pedal assembly by doing this. So hooked it up on the bench. All right. So I got my 5-volt regulated DC power supply. I got my meter. I have my accelerator pedal position sensor, and I have it hooked up to pins 1, 2, and 3. Uh, 1 is 5 volts in. 2 is my signal, I'm sorry, 2 is my signal return. That's going to be uh, my voltage reading. And then 0 is my ground. Uh, yellow is my ground. And there it is wired back to there. So an APP1 circuit, <sighs> freaking glare. When I accelerate it, I get two and a half volts. So if I let off the gas, it goes back down, accelerate, goes to two and a half. Well, 2.2. .2. All right. So now watch what happens. I'm gonna switch this. I'm gonna flip this around and we're gonna measure the other side of the circuit. to do while you're holding the phone there we go so now I got 0.44 which is higher than before and when I accelerate I get almost 5 volts which is exactly what I should be getting and I should have gotten 5 volts on the other side I believe uh, they should be exactly equal so when um, I got half the voltage on APP uh, 2 um, that was kind of weird. And, um, I thought to myself, that eh, can't be right. I mean, everything I've ever read, it, generally it's like an X. So it should be, you know, when one side's reading four and a half volts, the other side should be reading 0.5 and the two numbers cross reference one another. And that's how the computer knows if there's a wiring fault and then it'll shut down the vehicle. So with it being half the voltage, I thought like, oh, wow, I found the problem, but it turns out I didn't. A uh, little more further reading um, into Shopkey, and Shopkey, sure enough, shows that no, the other one's supposed to be half. So at that point, I thought to myself, well, all right, well, the pedal's obviously good. I even took the cover off, and <laughs> springs flew out of it. <laughs> I don't reckon I take them apart. Um, anyway, there's nothing really on the inside to look at. I kind of expected some potentiometers and stuff, and maybe I'd see some wear. No, it's like some sealed Hall effect sensor deal. Uh, you can't see squat, and there's no there was no signs of any damage internal to the pedal. I carefully figured out where all the pieces went and put it back together. Um, so that wasn't it. So then I went back the next morning and um, started to investigate that five volt reference signal um, because all the other sensors were tied to that five volt reference, and now I had codes which I didn't have initially. Initially. That were showing that there were issues with that five volt signal. Beautiful day out. I have two volts, uh, 0.2 volts on this. I should have five volts coming out of there. Uh, what I have is I have this hooked up, the meter's hooked up to ground, and that five volt signal. Now the ignition key's on. When I wiggle this harness right down here, you can see that the voltage jumps back up to five. So I move that around, that means that there is a break somewhere in this wire harness. No power, power. There's a break in the harness right down there. That's how you do it. So there is a splice 
right there that we have to locate. And I suspect that's where our problem is because right there, that's where that line drops off. And then this continues up to our accelerator pedal assembly, which was also thrown a code. What I had found uh, was the actual defect and no parts were involved. This is a wire harness fault and this happens all the time. Pin fitment issues, wires pulled apart. We dug into that wire harness and sure enough um, found a questionable splice um, that was was there. And then there was also there was a break in the, uh, the conduit, that plastic conduit on the outside of uh, the wire harness where it looked like it had the wire the conduit had been broken off and worn away um, and sure enough found a wire that was shorting out against the top of the EGR valve. Um, reposition the harness, fix the chafe wire, put a new piece of conduit back on it. Problem hasn't been back since. Let this be a warning to you that scan tools are not shopping list generators. Thanks. Have a great day. The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Please note, the new number is...